Hi, I'm Deborah Holt, and this program is called Living It Up because we want your life to be looking up. We want to lift you up, build you up, and uh, have you be ready when it's time to go up. So we're glad you're tuning in today, and we're just happy to have you with us. And I have some exciting guests today. I can't wait for you to hear their story. It's been some amazing things happening in the last few days, and you're going to get to hear about it. So that's pretty exciting. So grab you something to drink and come and sit down and just don't miss a minute of this. Well, today I have with me Edie Bayer. Edie is a prophetic minister. She is an amazing woman of God, and she's authored several books, many books, and she teaches that. Um, she has a gifting for teaching also. And so we're so glad to have you with us. Thank Edie. you. It's a pleasure, Deborah. Thank you for having me. We're going to have a good time. Yes, ma'am. I also have with me today Joellen Stevens. And Joellen, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm glad I'm here too. Joellen <laughs> operates in the prophetic, and both of their ministries are followed with signs, miracles, and wonders. And you're going to hear some of that in just a minute. And Joellen is an author. She's um, had her prophetic words uh, frequented on the Elijah list. And uh, these women have uh, spoken on uh, women on the front lines in Chicago and just done amazing things. So we're going to get right into that. I don't want to take any more time. I, wanna, I want you to hear from them. So we're going to start with um, you, Edie. Okay. And uh, since you're the closest to me. And I <laughs> am going to have you just tell what's been going on the last few days. You gals have kind of hooked up and in the last few days, and, and I'm going to start with you and let you just share some of the stuff that God's been doing. Okay, awesome. Um, Joellen and I have been uh, ministering in Connersville and Indianapolis and um, here in Illinois as well in Decatur uh, at Deborah's Ministry, Life Streams Ministries, which is just absolutely phenomenal on 22nd Street. So, uh, and that was the last place that we were at, and absolutely an amazing time that we had. Um, it, I'm telling you, God is moving. The glory fell. Everybody that has attended these meetings had gold dust on their hands and diamond dust and oil. And we had manifestations of miracle money showing up in people's wallets and savings accounts and in their purses. And in one particular instance, in somebody's ashtray. <laughs> Money showed up. I mean, absolutely, God is moving. And then we also had miracle weight loss, which was very fun. Amen. That was pretty incredible. Yes, it pretty was. Pretty incredible. Yeah. Now, Joellen, um, this has been going on even before our building. You guys have been traveling and doing different things. So what all kind of things were going on the day before and the couple of days before? What what took place? Did you guys um, we, share and, and prophesy over yeah, people or what What went on? We decided we were going to uh, tag team, actually, and just let the Holy Spirit flow. And uh, God just moved and people were being healed and mm. set free. And uh, well, I'm trying to think. <laughs> well, healings are, to me, one well, of the most the, important. the last conference we did was in the glory of his presence. And um, it's kind of started there I think and uh, but uh, God's glory showed up yes amen and he is the glory of the Lord is covering the earth as the waters cover the sea and it's it's uh, it's amazing what God's doing well I tell you when you get in that glory zone anything can happen I like what you said about the healings because you know to me uh, the healings are one of the most important things because physically, if you are, you know, hurting or if you're crippled up, you know, it kind of hinders everything you do in life. So yes. to me, that is that is amazing. The healings are they touch people's heart when people rise up or, and, you know, get healed from a leg injury or a sickness or disease or cancer. Now, one of you brought up something about the cancer cells. And that was so interesting to me. Yes. Um, you mentioned something, Joellen, I think it was you about it. This, you know, scientists singing. have actually discovered that they can play music from a cell, a human cell. And uh, they played, they literally played a cancer cell. And what came out of it was Chopin's funeral dirge when they wow. played that cell. And so uh, 
you know, our our worship changes. Sound our, makes yes, an impact, that's right. doesn't it? So yes, our sir. bodies are actually singing. Our cells in our bodies are yes. actually releasing a song. We have a song. That we is. We have a song to the Lord. Wow. That is so amazing. You know, it's so cool to me how science is confirming so many things, yes. you know, the things of God. Yes. You know, you just, it, it just blows your mind how scientifically it's all getting proved out after all these years, you know. It's amazing. What so, doing. but, but, Revealing. you know. Even as though the dark things in your body would s release a sound that was dark, the light in us, you know, God is light. So when, when we accept Christ and he comes in, the light comes in. And God's spirit connects with our spirit and becomes entangled and we're reborn of his spirit, which means now we are of the light. So uh, before you were saved, you were of your father that was darkness. But then when you get saved, you become of your father, which is light. God is light. And so this song is a light song and a beautiful song. When our bodies are releasing a song, it's a beautiful thing. And, uh, you know, uh, what, what other kinds of things were uh, shared in these conferences that you've held lately? Or what other kind of things would the people want to know that you ladies have been sharing? I would like to uh, I would like to say to everybody that's watching today that you have a book inside of you. Um, I actually teach in a totally free author class. I teach it across the country, and it's a ministry. God wants the book that is inside of you. He gave it to you, and now he wants it back. And I believe that every single person on the face of the planet has a book inside of them, and most people have more than one. Amen? You may have more than one yourself that's watching today. But honestly, between the glory cloud that's been showing up, between the healings that God has been doing, between all of the miracle manifestations, feathers and gems, and I mean, it's just been absolutely phenomenal what he's been doing. Um, God is after people. He is chasing people now in this season, unlike anything that I've ever seen in my walk to date. Um, he is chasing us down with everything that is in him and he's using us to do it and that's where your story comes into play amen, amen. because you have walked through some stuff in your lifetime and you can help other people by giving them the how to information how you got through that particular issue or obstacle that god created for you and that's a whole nother story but the point is it's all about helping the next person, the one that's following you. Mm. Yeah, that is so good. And allowing the glory to come out of us. You know, God has been uh, doing things in our life, and through the tests and the trials, He's been uh, working a more exceeding way to glory. I mean, you know, in us, and uh, it's coming out now. You know, in a greater degree through the church and uh, His people. And he just wants to be seen in this day. And he's coming forth on his people. The Isaiah 60 church, where that Isaiah 60, arise, shine for your light is coming. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. See, darkness is covering the earth. And dark, gross darkness to people, but the glories arising on his people. Amen. I really believe God wants to show the contrast. You know, he knows there's darkness out there. He knows there's difficult and dark things going on in the world more than ever before. But the dark's getting darker, but the light's getting lighter. Yeah. And that contrast is is what is so amazing. You know, I went to, down in Shelbyville. The They had a light display. And we drove down there, and it was a night when there was no moon out. The clouds had covered the stars, and it was pitch black of night. But wow, when I pulled in there for the first time and saw this huge and drove through this maze of Christmas lights, I was amazed at how they would not have been as beautiful if it had not been so dark. Right. And so that darkness that is out there that is, you know, trying to terrify our nation, the darkness 
is just making the light look all that much more beautiful. And people are, are recognizing the love and the light of God in this time and in this season. Wow. Um, you know, I thought it was so interesting, too. One of you ladies brought out about the glory is actually coming out. I'd heard of gold dust appearing before. I had heard of gold dust appearing before, but I had never put the two and two together and heard anyone say or gotten the revelation myself that that gold dust was coming out of us. Yeah. I'd even had it one time, but I had never realized it was, I thought it was falling from heaven or something. I'm thinking, right. how did we get this on us? But the, you mentioned the glory is coming out. Oh, that is so that funny beautiful. Uh, she, I had, God had shown me that a while back, and then she said, you know, God showed me the glory is coming out. I said, I was asking him that one day wow. because it, I, it was it looked it looked like it was in my pores yes. coming out, and I said, "What is that?" He said, "It's coming out of you, not on you. It's coming out of you." That just made it like non-scary because some people get kind of spooked by these phenomenons that are unexplainable. You know, Jesus said, "The kingdom of God is in us, mm -hmm. and it's not here or there, but it's in us, and His glory is in us. He's given us His glory, and so." The only thing that's really holding it back is us <laughs> and what, you know, not walking with him, mm -hmm. you know, as close as we should. And as we do, I mean, the more we step into, obey, in, into obedience, the more that glory comes forth. And every step of obedience we take, it, it works a more exceeding weight of glory, even in the midst of our trials and our tests and... I mean, you just think about somebody being persecuted and oh, think about the Christians that were beheaded. Yes. Right? Even though they were beheaded in the midst of that, they stood for Christ and his glory was seen through, through them and in them. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, their life meant something, mm -hmm. even though they were, you know, mm -hmm. slaughtered. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's why, you know, martyrs, that's... That's what Stephen. happens. They, Stephen, yes, yes Stephen. the glory. You've seen the glory on his face. Mm -hmm. You can think of example after example in the Bible mm -hmm. of that. And um, we should have that mindset, it says in 1 Peter 4, 1, rather to please God than sin, and therefore the glory will, that's when the glory rests upon mm -hmm. us, it says, actually rests mm -hmm. upon us. So then it's rest, resting on us. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Now, yeah, red. makes sense, doesn't it's really it? All, yeah. That and is so, so neat. Yeah, it says we're changed from glory to glory. He's yes. in us. You know? Yeah, he's in us. Uh -huh. The hope of glory. Yeah, mm -hmm. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's good. That's one of my favorite and scriptures. Yes. I love that, being changed from glory to glory. And I like the one that says we're prisoners of hope. Oh, yes. We're like prisoners of hope. He's going he's gonna to just keep recircling us around to that hope. You know, it's like if you get hope deferred and anybody can run into difficulties that cause you to feel kind of like there's hope deferred. But you know what? He'll just keep recalculating like your like your GPS. Surrey, your GPS, like Surrey. He'll just keep saying, OK, I got to recalculate her. She took a wrong direction. I'm going to recalculate her life That's right. back around because he says we're going to be changed from glory to glory to glory. And I, uh, I, I love that because he doesn't ever give up on us. He just keeps recircling us to the next glory. And, and I love that. Um, you know, I loved what you said about the obedience. The more obedience, we can't get more saved. If, if God's spirit, the Holy Spirit comes into us and we're, we're regenerated in our spirit, our spirit is regenerated and rebirthed and becomes awakened and full of the DNA of God. So you are born again, but what happens is our soul isn't um, regenerated. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. You know, we can get emotional, especially us women, but even men can get emotional. And we sometimes react in a way that doesn't really show a picture of our born again side. It yeah. really can, can manifest some things in our emotions that aren't really what God would want us to show. But, you know, the beautiful thing is that that's the part that he'll keep changing and he keeps mm -hmm. um, regenerating and sanctifying our soul. 
And um, so I love that, that he does that for us. He just keeps leading us and leading us. He's the shepherd, and he leads us into that regeneration. Yep. Well, um, now, what, where are you going from here? What's going to happen next? Do we know what's going to happen next? You never know what God's going to do, probably. I know where I'm headed. Where are you headed? We're actually uh, scheduled to do a tent revival mm -hmm. in Tomball, Texas. They're Tom putting Ball. up a tent. All the flooding aside, you know, people will have to kayak over there to the tent <laughs> revival. But we are literally, we're having a tent revival in Tomball, Texas, the 17th and 18th of June. That'll so that's neat. the next thing I'm, I'm doing. Home. <laughs> Taking a break. Well, hey, those are needed too. I know. You know, that's one thing they said about Catherine Kuhlman was she didn't live to be um, really elderly. I think she was in her late 60s maybe when she passed. But they said that's one thing. If you're going to be, you know, it takes a lot of stamina for the glory to operate through yes, you. Yes. You know, and then when the glory it lifts and the anointing lifts, you've got to take some downtime and let that body restore itself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just as important. You know, it's mm -hmm. like you got to ebb and flow in, in what God's leading you. And G Jesus pulled away and went off to himself right. and had his time to regenerate. And I think you, Joellen, you operate a lot on a daily basis. I mean, Joellen has a lot of stuff um, that's put on the Elijah list. If you need a place to go to get, you know, uplifted, you can go to the ElijahList.com and you can read a lot of Joellen's words on there. But, you know, because you're giving out daily, you're always posting on Facebook and posting on the Elijah list. I'm sure you do have to have times where you just rest. And, and I know people sometimes don't think you're doing anything, you know, but much. But I'm telling you that that Facebook people get blessed. I mean, you know, there were several comments at the meeting today about how much you've ministered to people on Facebook. And um, I feel like. I know a lot of people don't, but I feel like Facebook is a prime ministry for me mm. because uh, God's just used it with me so much. And, I, you know, some people have their, their ministry and then Facebook's kind of a side thing. But for me, that's how I kind of started out. With I mean, I've been in ministry for 30 years, but not like publicly like that as much. Uh -huh. And then that's kind of, uh, you know, the Elijah list picked... My words up in the 80s, oh. and um, and spiritfuel. dot com. dot me, and um, it just took off from there. And I'm telling you, I'm going to look at somebody right now. I just feel like um, some elderly lady sitting out there, and you're thinking God's done with me. But there's so much more. I'm I'm 62 years old, and. Uh, and God just started really sending me out when I was about, I think I was 57 or 58, 57, and doing meetings like this. And it's kind of a dream of mine not, you know, that to do that. And and God's allowed me to do it. So I was prophesied to for years and years that I would uh, touch uh, nations. And I always thought, how will I do that? I don't, you know, I don't even really want to go other places like that outside of the United States, I didn't think I did. And then now I've met all kinds of people from all over the world. And actually I Skype with some and we pr I pray for, with a lady from Australia and South Africa and one's in Texas and, and it's not easy, but another <laughs> lady. And, and one is from uh, Pennsylvania. And we'll Skype and, and intercede for all kinds of things and it's amazing what what technologies boy opened up for come a long way for me anyway and I, it's it's exciting i saw a, a vision one time uh after i first started going on facebook i saw this stage and i saw these people get on the stage and and this one man came out and represented all these people and he had God's heart in his hand mm. and he's and God said in the in this vision he said my heart has a voice mm. and it was it was all these people on Facebook he said my heart now has a voice oh wow and it was like one voice you know going out all over the all over the world that's neat. from one place from one That's platform really which was 
Facebook, and there's other social media too, mm -hmm. but of course mm -hmm. now uh, Twitter and yeah. whatever, but um, tweeting, twittering, and all those. I'm doing that too, but I, I don't keep up <laughs> I with it as much it as I do. It doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't do that a lot. Of, but the Facebook no is pretty the amazing. People, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I think the Facebook is really powerful. And then the Skyping, you know, now how did you get set up Skyping? Did you put your phone number out there or how does that work? Uh, I don't know. My husband does all Your the husband helps. Oh, well, good. That's me, wonderful. Echo, See, that's what you know. I need. I need a techie person. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to, well, that's my is, next prayer request. He's doing this summer. He's working on tech things at school. Uh -huh. But, uh, so he, so I just sit in a chair next to him and say, fix this and do that. That's great. That's <laughs> great. Know? So he, he He's good at that. That's really neat. Now, one of the girls that fills in occasionally as a host when I have to be gone, she had a young man from her church just volunteer to be her tech person, and he's setting her up a website where she can post her sermons mm -hmm. on her website and stuff. So there's just so many options. Yes. So many options. I, you know, I, I uh, blog, too, and I know I think Edie does, oh, do too, you? but I, yeah. I haven't been doing it a lot the last couple months, but... Um, you can bring that blog over to the Facebook and, you know, advertise that and just, uh, Boys. Just, and then it's Elijah endless. List and Spirit Fuel and there's a guy that, a website called uh, His Kingdom Prophecy that's, it's really big in Australia. Mm -hmm. And so they pick up a lot of prophetic people and uh, they picked me up before I even knew it. They said, we're, we need a picture of you because of the... And so, so I get a lot of friends from Australia now because oh, of that's this. awesome. Yeah, it so is. you're ready to go international now. I know. I know. So yeah, it's that's just amazing. Awesome. You know, there's another uh, another blog that's actually local here into the Chicago area, and it's the Global Voice of the Prophetic, and it's Dr. Oh, Dr. Teresa Dr. Phillips. Phillips. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dr. Teresa Phillips, mm -hmm. and she's actually she contacted. Oh, she, that's right. Yeah, I'm she's sorry. posted a couple of my things, a couple of the words that the Lord has given me too. So that's okay. very cool. But that's local. Mm -hmm. So that's very neat if we could just like even just keep it local. You know? Yeah. I mean so many options, I man. Know. But it's so needed because man, the time is short. Yes. I really believe the time is short. There's been so much scripture fulfilled, you know, and things are happening quickly and rapidly things are happening. And so um, maybe you're out there and you are a Christian but you aren't really launched into everything that you could be doing. And I would just urge you today to just find someone to help you with whatever technology is needed. But just begin to even use the opportunities that are at your door, maybe with your neighbors, maybe in line at Walmart or in line at a grocery store, wherever you are, um, just begin to move. That's one of the things that you ladies talked about at our building is using the opportunities that are at hand. Yes. And um, boy, sometimes you got to just move right then. You know, I think when Jesus called them and said, you know, come with me, come follow me, those fishermen had to just drop the net and go. Yes. You know, and uh, it was kind of interesting because I went to this quantum uh, sound conference down in Oklahoma City last week. And that is kind of what happened to me. I'm a worshiper, love to worship. I've recorded a couple CDs and um, I was there and what had happened was I just, uh, I had my little granddaughter and was going to take some time off and just stay back at the hotel and let her swim and miss this morning, a uh, morning um, session. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said, no, don't miss this one. And so I was like, you know what, we'll swim this afternoon. We're going. And so I felt like everything I did, you know, there was things I could have taken a little longer getting ready. You know, but it was like, skip that, just get ready, skip that, just get ready. And so the Lord told me which things to do and which things not to do. Just get ready and get out the door. Just get out the door. So be there on time, you know. And so I barely got there. It was already starting when I got there. I barely made it in time because when I came in, I just saw that a group of about eight women had started up onto the platform with the worship team. Mm. And I just, I felt this urgency, like you're supposed to be doing that. And I leaned over to somebody and said, what, what are they asking for? Why are people going up there? And they said, they asked for anyone who felt they were called to be a singer to get up there. And I literally had to just throw my things in the seat, tell my husband, keep an eye on our granddaughter and sprint. 
and I was like, you know, a little late getting up there. People were already lining up up there and I made it up them steps at the last second to get up there and become a part of the worship team. And through that, now I'm, you know, been offered the opportunity to just be a part of that team when I can. Awesome. So it's like if I'd have missed that opportunity, you know, yeah. it's like you got to go. When he calls you, go. When he opens the door, go. Yeah. And there are people that have opportunities. Maybe your neighbor catch them right when they're getting ready to go in the house. And the Holy Spirit says, go catch them. Catch them right then. It may be your last opportunity. You never know. So I would just encourage you to jump. When the Holy Spirit says move, move. Don't miss an opportunity. I've missed opportunities yeah, before. Yeah, we all have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so. You know, uh, Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. And I only say what I hear him saying. So the long and the short of it is if you hear the Lord telling you to do something, go and do it because it's the will of the Father and his will will be done in the earth realm, just like it is in heaven. But if you don't, hear him specifically tell you. Now, that's not to say that you're not called as a minister of reconciliation because you are. You're still trying to reconcile people back to the Father, but you're going to have a special anointing for it when God calls you to do it and tells you to go here and talk to this person or go here and do this specific action, whatever it is. So whatever you hear the Holy Spirit saying, I strongly recommend that you do it because there will be an anointing on it and success will follow you. Amen. It's so interesting because um, right before I went to this um, sound conference, I came down my street and turned to go across the bridge and there's a stoplight there. And I was sitting at the stoplight and there was a couple of cars on the left and three cars on the right. And there was people standing on the corners watching. And there was a man in a white suit, almost looked like a space suit, all in white. And he had a helmet on all in white, a white helmet with a screen, and he was a beekeeper. Oh, boy. And he was scraping bees off the sign and putting them in a box. He was gathering these bees. They had covered this sign. And um, I rolled my window down and asked the lady standing on the corner, I said, what is he doing? And she said, he's gathering up these bees. There's bees all over this sign, and, and he's collecting them. He's collecting them. She emphasized it and said it twice. He's collecting them. And I look back now, it was like, my name, Deborah, means B. And it was like, I feel like the Lord was trying to give me a sign, like it was on a sign. A sign. Here's your sign. <laughs> Here's your sign. Here's your sign. You know, he's collecting the Debras because Deborah means B. That's awesome. And so when I got to that conference and all this happened, I looked back and it was like he gave me, I remember that actually before I ran up there. And it was just like, I, for some reason, that flashed through my mind. I'm sure it was the Holy Spirit That's flashed awesome. that through my mind. Great but story. is that Spirit, not, and he was all in that. white, like, you know, because so he looked all clean and all, if he'd have had some weird wacky colors, I don't know, it wouldn't have been quite the same. It was like, you know, white purity, the Holy Spirit, right? you know, I don't know. Anyway, the white beekeeping man impressed me. Okay. Sure. It was my sign. Here's your sign, you know. So, well, we have only a, probably a minute and a half left here. And so, um, Joellen, I, I'd like for you to just make any closing statements you want to make. And then, Edie, maybe you close with an opportunity for them, if they don't know the Lord, to just oh, invite oh, him amen. in. Amen. Just really quick, I, I just want people to understand that God is not the God of religion. He's the God of, he's, a fu he's fun. He's exciting. The things he, he, we were talking about, he does in our life. Uh, knowing so God true. is not boring. It's exciting. And uh, look what he's letting a 62-year-old lady do right now. He's letting me go out and have fun. I mean, I get tired, but you know what? When I get under the anointing, it's exciting. You know, God is exciting. And so just know that that he's real and he's, he's, he's fun. He's a lot of fun. Edie and I have just had a a ball and the spirit flow between us and that's awesome. I love these two sisters and I'm I'm so thankful to be here today. Awesome. 
Awesome. And I would encourage you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, get to know Him. He is wooing you now. That's why you're watching this show. He loves you, and He wants you to be part of His family. He wants you to be part of our family. We want you to be part of the family. So why don't you do this? Why don't you just seek the Lord while you can? Because that's what the Word says, and He will be found by you. Amen? So I encourage you. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life to be your Lord and Savior right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for joining today and we look forward to seeing you again. And until then, this is Deborah Holt living it up on Up TV. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.